What's up guys? How are my bulls doing this morning? It's a Friday. It's a great day. It's beautiful here. I hope it's beautiful where you are. I want to bring a lot of energy today because I'm excited about making a video. I'm excited about showing you guys the Sherpas list and the trades that I made this week and how I made some cash even though the market was down. I hope that you guys followed and uh, remember I'm showing you this. I'm giving you all the transparency in the world so you guys can, if you are following or uh, just learning from an educational perspective, see what's up and see what's doing. But um, we're going to get to that. And then I'm going to show you about the, uh, I, I want to teach you rather about the different types of trades. I've rewatched all my videos to try to improve the content. And I've realized that other than talking fast and saying um a lot and ah a lot, that I use a lot of trading nomenclature and a lot of words and, um, and definitions of types of trades kind of improperly based on what the what the textbook definition of. I don't give a shit about that, that's fine. But I want you to know what I mean. And, um, and I talk about all of this and I wanna show you a little bit of a glimpse into what I'm thinking as well as uh, what you need to learn about trading. So we're gonna talk about that too. I wanna make this quick. I wanna make it thorough and I want it to be enjoyed by you guys. So we're gonna see how this goes. But first and most importantly, real easy. Um, well, first and most importantly, that song is called Let's Live For Today. It's by The Grassroots. I think it was written in the early 60s. Really great song. It's a deep cut, but that whole album is terrific. And uh, I just love that, that banger right here. Uh, I can't stop it. There we go. All right. Well, I played more than 15 seconds. So I'm going to get a copyright claim. Uh, what we are going to do, uh, grab a pen and paper if you want. That may be helpful. Um, but first, we're going to go over the trades that I discussed on Monday. I screenshot it and saved it to my photos. Also put it up on my website. Now, where I used to have day trades on my website, I'm now calling that the Sherpa's List. I'm the stock Sherpa. I take rich people to the top of the mountain. That's where I got the name. I always joked when I was a broker that I felt like I was just the Sherpa. Um, I was just carrying all the heavy stuff and hoping the guys could get there. They didn't have to listen to me if they didn't want to, but my job was to get them to the top. Now I'm making videos and trading on my own, and it's your choice. You're in it with me, so we're both the Sherpa, so to speak. Anyway, uh, yeah, the Sherpa's list is available on my website all the time, and I'm going to update it with what I'm trading and thinking about trading, and I talk about it in these videos. I think it'll make it more interactive. I'm really onto something here. Um, but anyway, I published that on Monday. You can either go watch the video or you can uh, go to my news, subscribe to my newsletter or just go to uh, just write it down whenever I talk about it on Monday and then we can revisit it on Friday. I think that's enough transparency to be you know, more efficient than any portfolio manager in the world. Here we are. The first uh, trade that I discussed, this was a swing trade. This is a swing tr trade that I've done three weeks in a row now. Uh, I've traded it two weeks. I've just had it on my list and kind of discussed it, but I didn't have the cash available to buy it uh, two weeks ago. Um, but uh, I did recommend it for some of you guys, and uh, I believe it's been profitable all three weeks, but we'll have to go back and check the tape on that. Not any longer, ERX. ERX is the energy bull, two-time daily. Part of my process of my secret sauce is that I wake up at two in the morning and four in the morning, and I screenshot different commodity and currency prices I wake up, uh, whenever I wake up, six, seven o'clock, I check those correlations to the market and they decide my trades. This is a swing trade, meaning that I, I typically wanna hold it for about a week or two weeks, and my goal is to make 10 to 20%. So uh, hopefully you can see it behind me here, I'll zoom in. This is the current trade, uh, this is the current price that is. So where do I have to go for y'all to see it? There we go. All right, 27.02. I discussed and uh, actually made personal trade on my own, buying it on Monday at 24.63. And it was already up 3% when I bought it. I was a little late on that because I typically don't trade on Monday. Um, that's a winner. You guys know that. All my channel followers understand that. That's big oil. That's the, uh, the, the double time leverage on oil. Keep this short, I'm gonna move on. Mention that that is a swing trade. I had another swing trade uh, that turned into a triple digit 
uh, winner for me was an option trade on EOG. I've been trading this since before I made this channel, obviously, but also in and out and in many accounts. I can't provide an exact uh, return because I've, I've got many accounts and some for myself uh, that are have different goals. So I don't really want to go into detail on which price it was because it may be misleading uh, that I bought it at because I have all types of uh, you got this thing laddered out all the way to uh, next year. And then I also have some short termers on the move. But anyway, I told you EOG, if I'm going to trade an option on it, you can certainly trade a regular uh, buy and hold or a dip trade or a buy, uh, you know, whatever you want to do. You can be your own daddy on these trades. I'm still giving you great stocks. So that was at 74 and three quarters. So $74 and 76 cents. And uh, now it is at 76.90, so it's at 77 cents. That's about a 5% gain if my math is right. Maybe a little bit more, 6% gain. Um, it's a killer. If you look at the, if you look at the um, charts here, it's up and it's candle sticking up. Um, I closed that one out. I made a video about that on Wednesday, I believe. So I closed out that option trade um, at, a, at a substantial gain. And I bought more LabU because LabU is my favorite swing trade. And that swing trade I got in at, which is the next stock, so we'll move on. And, uh, it's an ETF. It's the triple. If you're new to the channel, if you're not new to the channel, you know exactly what it is. It's the direction three-time daily bull. Uh, it is a rinse and repeat, a rinse and repeat, that is, swing trade of mine. Uh, it is at $61, uh, it's at a, at a very, very, very uh, low price. If you, you got the ranges here, it's at the low end of the uh, the 52 week range. This thing sold off hard, like five days in a row, six days if I'm just going off the top of my head of down days. Uh, it is also pre-market up right now. This thing should be at 75 or 80, I think in the next couple of weeks, uh, eight months at the, at the longest. And if you look at that chart, look at how look at how tradable that is. That's why I love it. We got the Nasdaq NASI, so the Nasdaq index uh, is hitting all time highs, and this thing's selling off. And this is a tech and a biotech, and biotechs as well as techs actually, as well as healthcare turned around the most on Friday. I think there's a lot of move, money moving around. I don't think that this necessarily has anything to do with Biden's plan. Uh, maybe on an ancillary effect, but you know, this has been trending downward for a while. I don't really care even about the direction long term. When I do the swing trades, it's just these dips. If you look, we got boom, 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 boom. Let's play racquetball and I'll just be in the middle. Let's let's gamble on sports and I'll just be the bookie. I don't give a crap which side wins. So anyway, that's my lab you trade. Uh, I dollared back into it. So again, I sold EOG uh, at a pretty good return and then I bought even more on the on the lower price. I'm going to talk about that in a minute when I discuss my trades, but that's called dollaring down, or at least that's what I call dollaring down. Some people call it dollar cost averaging. Almost no one really has a, a true definition for what that is um, because the textbook definition is just common sense of, of basically saying uh, I'm lowering my overall price by buying more shares. When I do it, I try to buy a higher uh, dollar amount as well as a lower price. That way I can move my basis even lower. Anyway, a little pro tip there. Uh, I think, I think that one comes kind of inherently. All right, that's all I, oh, I also had a recommendation on SOS, it's an option. SOS is down and it's bouncing and it's about to go for a run in my opinion. This option trade was up, uh, I bought it at 90 cents and it's an October uh, option trade and all I need is a break even of $4.90. It's at 3.90 right now went up to like 425 so my option hit the money the first day i bought it i didn't cash it because i have so much more time and i will get more into that in the future i really want to get to the meat and potatoes of this i want to get really uh, really into the the uh good stuff so we're going to just jump right to it um overall that's how you make money in up uh, in down markets um this is what i'm trying to teach you anybody any old fool can make money in up markets but i don't like waiting out the down ones and also what's the fun in that right it's all about having fun and better than working, right? All right. So here's the deal. The types of trades. I want you to get out a pen and paper and follow along. And I'm going to be a lot more uh, quick and a little less thorough, but I think I'm going to get to all the main points. And if I don't, I'll make another video because I'm going to hammer this into you guys. 
All right, day trades. When people talk about day trades, they may be talking about the job as a day trader. All that means is that you don't work or that you uh, speculate on uh, on the price of assets and trade throughout the day. Um, and that you do it for profits and you do it for profits in the short term and the long term. That's probably the best definition. That's my definition. That's the Sherpa definition. That's the Sherpa dictionary, baby. Um, th this is what day trading really is. It's um, when I talk about it, I mean entering and exiting a position multiple times in one or two days, the same position. So when you see the guys with the blacked out back of an advanced chart like this, let's just pick a stock, any stock. Let's pick one that's volatile. I'm going to pick uh, GBTC, for example, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. Shoot, you know what? No, I'm not. I, this is just what popped up because I've already been doing it. Um, we've got SOS here. And I'm going to put this chart on the daily. So go down. And we're going to say uh, one day chart today. Well, market's not open yet. We're going to say two day chart. This is where, it, let's say you notice a pattern in a chart. So this would be yesterday. Day trading would be deciding that, hey, SOS is selling off really hard, but it's getting a little lower than it should be. And it's like trying to enter right here, for example. And then in a couple minutes or, or even seconds, sometimes sell it up here and turn it over and then try to do the same thing down here and then try to do it again. That's day trading. That's what day trading really is. Um, a lot of people do this on Forex and currencies because they trade 24 seven. So you could do it at nighttime. Um, here's what you need to know if you want to be a day trader in that sense. Um, those type of day trades, you typically, well, you're going to have to have margin because to enter a position, exit a position and re-enter it is, um, is uh, all brokers are going to get mad at you unless you have $25,000 in the account and you also have margin. So beware of that. Um, when you, it's called pattern day trading. And if you do it too many times uh, in a 90 day period, they will put a 90 day hold on your account. And then you can only enter a position and exit a position in the same day and use cash covered. Uh, the reason for that is uh, the three day settlement rule on security. So now you know, at least you can say you learned some, one thing from this video. We're gonna move on, swing trading. So swing trading, uh, that's what I talk about when I say a swing trade. I mean, let's call it a day. Let's call it a two-day trade to two-week trade with a little bit of flexibility there. Swing trading for me is done almost exclusively in ultra-high volatility stocks or ETFs. And usually either in a levered ETF or... Um, a tech company or a company, like I said, that has a very high beta to the market. I want this thing to move like crazy because I want to make between 10 and 20% in each of these securities. And I also kind of consider some of the option trades that I do swing trades only in the event that, uh, that they, if they moved against me, I'd still be okay, but I'm not buying more because that's a different type of trade. So stick with me here. What we've been doing in LabU, what we've been doing in ERX, what we've done in the past in a, a TQQ or SQQ um, or all of these ultras, SOCL, SXLL, GUSH, GASH, um, uh, uh, JNUG, all of these triple levered securities and double levered securities. Those are swing trades because they got so much juice on them. And those are the ones that I've had the most success with. with. Um, and they also allow you to get out and go play golf and not have to watch it all day. Who wants to do that? So an example of the swing trades, all I really got to say to that is I can show you a chart on all of these, but I think you guys know what I mean when I say swing trade. Actually, I know you know what I mean. And if you don't, keep watching my channel and learn. Subscribe and like. Um, dip trade. All right. BTFD stands for buy the fucking dip. That's a very popular uh, deal on one of my favorite websites, Stock Twits. Um, buy the dip. So I'll give you a great example. Actually, this is a good one. Peloton sold off 14% yesterday because of a lawsuit where somebody died uh, or allegedly died, I should say, on one of their tre uh, treadmills. So buy the dip is, hey, this thing sold off and you can see it right here. Man, I'm good. All right.
so right here on my screen, we got this sell off. Hey, Peloton was just at 140 and now it's down to 83. Um, I'm gonna buy the dip because I know it'll come back at some point, right? Like, you know, uh, we can't think too myopically here because in the long term, what company that makes gym equipment hasn't had some type of class, class action lawsuit about an alleged death using their equipment. I'm not minimizing any of that. Uh, this is what I mean from the thinking of a buy the dip type of person. You can do this on anything. I mean, Bitcoin dropped. I told you guys to buy the dip. That's what I meant. BTFDs. BTFDs have a longer time horizon than almost any other type of um, security to me because all you're doing is you're just saying, hey, it's going to revert back to the mean, mean reversion. Let's let's speak a little bit more uh, frankly here. It's going to go back to what it usually does. Uh, it's going to go back to the prices that are more on the average, which is reverting to the mean then stay where it is. That's all that means. So that's a BTF trade, buy the fucking dip, uh, buy the freaking dip. And, uh, you know, also, like I said, that's that's just a dip trade. So uh, I dip trade Bitcoin all the time. I dip trade B, uh, GBTC all the time. And I've talked about these dip trades. Um, we're going to keep moving because I want to keep this a hedge. I'm going to make a whole video about hedging, but here's a simple deal. Let's pretend that I am heavy in, um, let's pretend that I'm heavy in, uh, let's say the NASDAQ. Actually, I'm gonna put two layers on this. So please stick with me on my hedge trade. Let's say that I own Apple and Tesla in, in, my, my, like in my individual long-term portfolio. Or let's say I own it in my 401k, for example. Well, if I got a couple million bucks or a couple hundred thousand bucks or a large percentage of my nest egg or just I'm trading it, uh, not trading it, I'm holding it uh, and I'm exposed to it. What do I do if it goes down? Uh, particularly if it's not uh, over a year, do you want to pay taxes on something that you lost money on or that you that you used to have money in? Like no one wants to, no one wants to go uh, through that. So what you can do is you can go, you know, I own Apple and I own Tesla, but I'm really worried about this trade uh, deal that's about to go through Congress about, um, you know, tariffs and taxes. So I just I'm really worried in the short term. Well, what you could do is you could just go SQQQ. Tesla and Apple make up almost 15 percent of the Nasdaq and they always move in the same direction. So without having to sell the positions that I currently have, uh, because it, it, for a couple of months and then risk the risk, the. Uh, you know, legislation or whatever is going on with the Chinese trade war and tariffs and taxes about, uh, you know, the commerce between us and China affecting the stocks that you own. You can always hedge it. So that's why it's called a hedge trade. So what this is, is this is the three time SQQ uh, Q is the three time short on the NASDAQ. Right. And I just mentioned that they always move in the same direction. So um, what I'm doing is I'm kind of freezing one position. And if I'm wrong about my trade, I'll still be okay because that position is gonna still go up, right? But I'm worried that it's gonna go down, particularly in the short term. So what I can do is I can take cash and I can put it in SQQ and it's gonna move three times what this moves. And if this moves down, SQQ is gonna move back up. And then let's say that the legislation goes through and uh, it turns out to not affect us very well. I can even sell this and buy back at a lower price and write it back up. Are you with me? That's that's what hedging is. That's what a hedge fund does, believe it or not. They get all this hate, but really the job of a hedge fund, at least originally, was to provide um, some type of positive correlation or negative correlation and positive return in the down market. That was all they were doing. That's how the pension funds are, are managed from a risk perspective. It has gotten out of control. I ain't gonna fight anybody on that one, but hedging. Another way to hedge, uh, you can go short the price of oil when you own a lot of energy stocks. You can. You can, um, right now, the price of lumber is going through the roof. If you're worried about, um, let's say you're worried about the devaluation of the dollar, which would greatly affect uh, energy price, I'm sorry, lumber prices on exports, you could, you know, go buy, uh, let's say, like the Chinese yuan or, or um, uh, a different currency and, uh, and then ride that back up in case the price of lumber goes down. Anyway, pretty detailed. That's a hedge trade. Moving on. I talked about both of these yesterday. I'm not gonna show you any examples just because I talked about it that quickly. But when I say cyclical, cyclical, 
is could be a lot of things different times in the business cycle like in expansionary times people buy more consumer discretionary and more tech if you think about it you're gonna go buy a nice apple computer or a really cool t-shirt from your favorite online um, portfolio manager and a stock tip giver uh, or, or, or are you going to save your money when the market's going really well and you're making a bunch? You're probably going to go buy that stuff when we're in a boom, when we're in a bust and we're down in the dumps like we were in 2011 and 2008 and uh, 2001 and so forth. There's a lot of stocks that do the best are things like consumer discretionary. You got to wipe your ass. You got to brush your teeth. I'm going to invest in companies like uh, toilet, that make toilet paper and uh, tooth, toothpaste and grocery stores and Dollar General and private prison systems and all of this kind of stuff. So there's all kinds of ways to do cyclical trading. Um, calendar trading, like I mentioned, there's uh, before Christmas, everybody buys the video game companies. Everybody buys whatever the new toy is. You wanna buy Mattel because a new Barbie's coming out. These are kind of top down calendar based uh, trades. Um, so write down calendar trade, write down cyclical trade. We've already got hedge down, we've got dip down, we've got swing down, we've got day trade down. And then we, you know, with calendars a little bit more, I mentioned the one that I used to do doesn't seem to correlate anymore, but uh, when uh, a good example would be uh, when when um, spring break is coming up, you can buy a calendar cru uh, carnival cruise line CCL. There's a good example. Maybe um, maybe when this pandemic uh, it seems to be kind of coming to a, a head here, when they start allowing full capacity on airplanes and air travel. Actually, I think they've done that for the most part. But let's say that the rest of the, uh, the the world opens up completely and you think that travel and leisure is gonna boom, you can buy travel and leisure companies based on that large macro event, okay? Um, if you did that every single year at the same time or near the same time or you even had the idea to, that would be considered a calendar cyclical trade. And um, I think you get the picture there. LTH, long-term hold. A long-term hold is what a lot of investors do. And that's a great way to, to make money in the long term. It's not a great way to make money in the short term, but that's completely okay. And it works for 90% of the investors out there, but it doesn't always work for the bulls like us. Um, long term hold is basically just picking a good stock. It, the way you do this is you use macros. So those are two different types of trades, but I'm going to blend them together. I'm going to use macros, Peter Lynch, top down trades. So I'm going to blend these two together. We got long term hold. Uh, pretend that you're 25 and you got a bonus from your job uh, and you're going, look, I don't want to watch my account. I don't want to have to put on a, a nice polo and go into a broker and have him try to sell me a bunch of shitty ass mutual funds. Uh, I'm just going to pick a stock that I like for a very long time. And if it goes through the roof, that's great. And if it doesn't, I don't really care. I'm not going to watch my account very much. And you're going to pick a stock like Amazon. Amazon. Here's how I pick my long-term holds, okay? I pick my long-term holds by, is the company going to kick ass for the next 10 or 20 years? Is the company completely the best in their market and do they have any barriers to entry and competition? And then third, do I buy their shit? Do I buy their stuff? I'm cursing a lot today, I don't know what the deal is. That's a, that, so that's the macros that I look for. Um, you can have your own rules. I've published my rules in the past. I'll put them back up on the website sometime in the future, but I got to keep you coming back. So those are my rules on macro trades. And I blend those two. So long-term holds, but a long-term hold is just what I mentioned before. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to hope it goes up. I know it'll probably beat the market over the long term. I know that I'm concentrated. It's just with extra money. I don't really give a hoot about um, what it does on a daily basis or what my idiot friend says when we're gambling on the golf course. All right. And then the macro aspect is how I choose to, to do that. So how I choose to pick that. I think macro and long term holds uh, are most uh, common uh, and most common sense. And that's why I like them. I just had a buddy uh, from high school I hadn't talked to him forever hit me up and say, hey, what do you think about this blank? And what they're doing is they're doing exactly what I love, which is they're going, hey, this is something that I use or this is something that I'm hearing about or this is a new technology, shout out electric vehicles. And I wanna just put some, my, my foot in the water and I don't really care. So that's what a long-term hold is. And macro is the decision on how to make that. All right, I beat that to death. Correlation, correlation is real simple. And correlation is just going, hey, um, I, I noticed that this blank, like this stock moves with this. So let's say like, um, let's say like an industrial manufacturer moves with the price of steel. 
So if I start following the price of steel, which is a leading indicator, I can just buy X, which is US Steel Corporation, and then get that correlation. Um, let's say that uh, I noticed that the, the price of uh, the pork bellies causes uh, this Chinese restaurant cha food, Chinese food restaurant chain to, uh, to do very poorly. Like when the price of uh, pork and beef go up, the price of this uh, restaurant that serves food, obviously pork and beef, the, the, they go down. All right, that's a negative correlation. So if you see the opposite happen, so you see the price of those uh, those foods or feedstock as they call it. So if you see uh, beef and um, pork go down, then you can buy the company thinking that it's gonna go up. So there's negative correlations and then there's positive correlations and you can work these correlations however you want. My correlation trades are when Bitcoin goes up, SOS goes up. When it doesn't, I even buy more SOS until it does go up. Um, I did that with Riot and that's how, that's how I got a lot of my clout among a lot of my followers and readers to be honest with you is because it was just an easy trade. I let it be easy and I made a ton of money because of the correlations. Uh, so anyway, that's how correlations work. Contrarian trades. Contrarian trades seem to sometimes be the best way to rock the market. Um, I'm going contrarian as an example for Dogecoin right now. I can't buy it and I refuse to open up a, uh, a Robinhood account because I think they're a bunch of crooks uh, and I really don't believe in what they're doing. But that's one of the only places you can buy Dogecoin. I think that when uh, Elon goes on SNL, they're gonna realize that it's this is just a massive joke. So the most of the public is going one way, contrarian is to act in the contrary and go the other. There are entire investment philosophies on this. If you've ever seen the movie, The Big Short, the company that was based in Denver that uh, decided to go with Michael Berry and uh, decided to short, they were contrarian investors. They just said, whatever the public does, there's a tiny percent of chance that it's gonna uh, go the opposite way and the price to put that little tiny gamble out there if it hits it's gonna win right um, if you play craps that's like putting uh, all your money on one number and then throwing um, that's kind of like playing a 2-7 offsuit in poker against aces but you don't have to pay as much to buy that hand right and if it does win no one thought it would and you make bukus of cash that's contrarian all right, I talked about macro, so we're on the very last, the final and the 11th type of trade. This is a tax trade. And I think this will tie in nicely now that I'm vibing. A tax trade would be an example of what I used to do when I was uh, both a financial planner and um, investment manager, if you will. Here's the deal. I'm going to give you an example. This happened a lot. Let's say I have... I'm just going to use the example of, you know what, I'm going to make it personal. I'm going to just say, let's just pretend I have uh, Exxon Mobil. This is a true story. This happened all the time. I'm not even going to tell a story and make it specific, but let's just say I have a client or it's my own money and I have Exxon Mobil and Exxon Mobil is up 39% this, uh, this year. Uh, I want to get rid of it, but it's coming up to the end of the year. And I don't want a long-term capital gain, a short-term capital gain. I want a long-term capital gain, but it, I can't sell this, and I can't I can't sell this thing uh, without being hit at the highest tax bracket because long-term cap, or short-term capital gains, anything that you haven't owned for over a year, uh, is going to be ordinary income. Let's say that I make a couple million dollars a year, and I've got a couple million dollars in this stock, and I'm certainly going to be in the highest tax bracket. Um, I want to capture this because I don't think it's going to go up any longer. Uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think this thing's going to go up any longer, but, and I want to get rid of it, but it's the end of the year. I want to make a tax trade. Um, let's, let's decide that I want to try to freeze this position. There's a lot of ways to do that. The easiest way would to be um, to sell puts on this position, uh, right? No, not sell puts. Um, you know what? I kind of went off too specific in a position. I'm gonna make this a little bit easier. Let's say that you have a company like Apple and you work for Apple and you own a lot of Apple stock 
and it's gone down quite a bit and you made a lot of money this year. Sorry for the odd transition. I got too specific and I don't want any legal ramifications to be honest with you, that's what that was. Uh, so if you have, if you have Apple uh, and you've noticed that there's this pullback right here and it was up here and my $100,000 is now only worth uh, $50,000 uh, because it's dropped and it's coming up to the end of the year. I made a bunch of money. I got a bunch of uh, 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 other capital gains in my trade out account because I've been kicking, an ass, kicking ass. And I really want to keep Apple, but I want to take some losses this year so I can lower the income on uh, my trading accounts and, and otherwise. Uh, maybe some options that I had that, ex that uh, were granted to me as payment. Well, what you can do is you can sell um, the stock right before the end of the year and then just buy let's say uh you have 61 days before you can rebuy apple or they take away the, the it's called the look back but they, they basically take away um your uh or a wash sale is actually what it's called but they take away the loss that you just use for your advantage from a tax perspective but you could just buy a technology etf and you'll notice that almost all technology etfs follow it or instead of buying apple you could buy samsung for the next 61 days or you could buy um, another tech company that you like. But the idea would be that you're trying to capture the loss by the end of the year. All right, that's the, ten, the 12 trades, 11 trades that I wanted to talk about. Um, I also just got news that I wanna share with you guys. By the way, I hope you liked that. I hope that that was helpful. I know it got a little wordy at the end, um, but uh, again, this is all authenticity. I do want to say this, if your advisor has not talked to you about any type of this trades, or if you talk to your advisor about any of this trades, or if you've ever taken advice from anybody ever about any of these type of trades, now you know more than they know if they've never brought that up to you, or they simply don't care. I don't know how that's arguable, and that's my mission. So when I talk about my mission and I talk about it with conviction, I think that you should own the agency of your investments and manage them as you would uh, your life. I think you should take agency over what your assets are doing for you because that is, in many cases, uh, what keeps, uh, unfortunately, that's what keeps, you know, cash is what keeps uh, the world going around. So uh, go to everbullish.com, go to Ever Bullish One Podcast. Uh, check out the portfolio store. Buy one of my $75 portfolios and follow along. These are great for IRAs, rollover IRAs, an old 401k that you have, or a taxable account. If you're over the age of 55 or 60, you may want to take a look at my balanced portfolio. On the 15th of this month, I'm going to come out with the newest third-party verified results uh, throughout this year, and I'm certain that I'm crushing the market uh, and the balanced and the dividend portfolios, and I'm almost 1,000% certain that I'm doing it in the um in the uh ever bullish one portfolios you can buy one of my cool shirts support the website uh please help everbullish.com to achieve uh the scope that i and hopefully you believe that it deserves uh and try to buck the system in the train uh in the um in the trading and investment industry i am anti-dogma i am anti-bureaucracy and those are the two things you're gonna find in every brokerage house. They're gonna take your money, they're gonna put it in a managed account that charges you too much money. They're gonna to try to get you average returns. They're gonna tell you a bunch of pros are looking at your account. What you could do is follow along with me and learn how to be a better investor so you're not reliant on the mechanic that's tell breaking your car and then telling you what's wrong with it. Um, what else? Sha la 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 live for today. That's about all I got. I do want to update other people that follow EV stocks. I, this just came out as I was, as I was uh, making this video because the market just opened. Um, there's a company called Arrival. I've talked about them in the past. Arrival, uh, it started as a SPAC. The SPAC symbol was C-I-I-G. And the SPAC symbol uh, did go public not too long ago. And now it is A-R-V-L. This company makes these cool looking transportation vehicles similar to buses, but a mix with a subway. They're shortened and they carry between six to 10 people, I believe, unless they've changed their business model. Um, ARVL, they just announced a deal with Uber where uh, they're working on something cool and something crazy. So uh, give it a check, throw it on your watch list. I'm gonna throw it on mine. In the meantime, I'm gonna keep managing 
uh, in learning about the market so you don't have to, relaying the good word, teaching you how to trade. Here's the outro. I am Chase at Ever Bullish. I am the Stock Sherpa on YouTube. I am the YouTube Portfolio Manager, the first and best. That song uh, was Live For Today by The Grassroots. I talked a lot about uh, the market today. I talked a lot about the trades. I showed you all the transparency that you're not going to get anywhere else. The final thing is we made money in a down market. That's how you do it. And um, lab you next week. I'm not really sure what else. I still like GBTC long term. L-G-R-A-F-G-L-F-G. We'll see you.